Okay, thank you very much for your introduction and for the invitation here. Uh, this is my first time in Riga, so I'm very happy to be here. And uh, this is the theme of my presentation. Uh, in my speech, uh, I would like to uh, present the biography of Felix Nussbaum, uh, a Jewish artist of German origin. Uh, his work is a specific way reflected the contemporary history, testifying the changing mood and attitude of the German inhabitants in the face of the crisis of assimilation and growing antisemitism. I would like to describe how political, social, and historical factors firmly determinate his artistic way and show how important it was to him to illustrate the chronology of persecution and the growing antisemitism. The Nazis wanted, along with the precisely planned Holocaust, to remove all traces of the Jewish community in Europe. The artists who witnessed the tragic event tried to survive each day and then say it from oblivion on canvas as a testimony for the next generation. Felix Nussbaum, 1904 to 1944, was born in a completely assimilated Jewish family as the son of Philip Nussbaum, Philip Nussbaum and Rachel von Dijk. Uh, he was the husband of an artist, Felka Płatek, uh, 1899 to 1944. She was a Warsaw painter of Jewish origin. A father who dealt with painting as an amateur had a strong influence on his son. The young artist was allowed to pre precede his art and registered in art school in Hamburg in 1922. Then he went, to, then he went on to study in Berlin, uh, where he received recognition and then studied in Rome um, under uh, the auspices of the Berlin Academy of Art in the prestigious Villa Massimo. At the beginning of the 1930, he achieved a strong artistic position and successfully exhibited in Berlin galleries. Nussbaum's brilliant career developed was stopped in 1933 by Adolf Hitler rise to power. The growing wave of antisemitism anti in his native country forced him to decide on emigration. After several months of asylum in Italy and France, he settled in Belgium. At the time, the country was a frequent choice for the Jews fleeing the Third Reich. After the German aggression of Belgian territory in May 1914, he painted in secret documenting Nazi German crime, crimes on the Jewish nation. He imprisoned in a transit camp in Mechelen and then transported do, uh, to Auschwitz with the last transport that left Belgium. Felka Płatek was murdered on 2nd August 1944. The exact date of her husband's death is unknown so far. Analyzing Nussbaum, I show you him. Uh, analyzing Nussbaum painting, we can see the artist's interest in various current of 20th century painting. We will find in them inspiration from the early work of Pablo Picasso, peculiar anxiety known from the canvases of James Elsor or Georg Grosch, expressionism and surrealism. From the point of view of iconography, and the study of the influence of historical factor on Nussbaum painting, the most interesting is the last period of his art, 1939 to 1944, when the artist introduces traditional Jewish themes to his art, combining them with universal and personal themes. The artist's work has been classified as part of the Neue Sachlichkeit style, uh, but no fundamental question had yet has yet been raised. What extent the form of his work was provoked by events in Europe, including escalation of nationalism in the homeland, the Volkish movement, the idea of superiority of races, and uh, above all, of course, the historical event during the Second World War. The young artist grew up in an um, uh, unusually uh, turbulent period of uh, European history at the end of the imperialist era. In Weimar Republic, the reluctance toward Jews was 
increasingly stressed and the Nussbaum family couldn't find themselves a new situation, which was a problem of many assimilated, assimilated Jewish families in Germany. Felix Nussbaum, for a, uh, for a very long time, was not able to clearly define his religious and cultural affiliation and identity. identity. Uh, and art, I think, uh, was a kind of therapy for him. Self-portrait, along with the um, appealing motif of the mask, uh, turned into a form of examining one's own person into the kind of self-identification game. In self-portrait from 1928, uh, from the Berlin pe period in his life, on the one hand, the artist measure us with penetrating eyes, but on the other hand, maybe he examines himself looking in the mirror. The headgear, uh, uh, he the headgear here shows on his own profession, and the second attribute of the artist, brushes, bring to mind a bunch of fresh flowers. The lower part of the Nussbaum face covers the mask of a sad clown, which, is, which in this case may symbolize the melancholic soul of the Jewish painter, as he is afraid to show his emotion in everyday life, playing the role of the jester. Who am I actually? Felix Nussbaum seems to be asking himself. A German of Jewish origin, or uh, maybe a German Jew? Uh, viewers uh, maybe just simply see here an artist. Um, the artist biography researcher Peter Jung believed that Nussbaum used art as a mirror in which he reflected his life, revealing in his subsequent work the pain of his own experience. The stay at the German Villa Massimo Academy has strongly influenced the personality of uh, the artist. This was the period in which he met directly into the ideology of Nazism in art. During his study, he met Arno Brecker, the uh, future first sculptor of Hitler. And also he was a uh, uh, witness the propaganda speech of Josef Goebbels uh, in Rome. Joseph Goebbels uh, present Hitler's arch artistic doctrine according to a new type of art, an art that in extolled the uh, virtues of the Aryan race and heroism. There were the main themes that the Nazi painter should develop. Felix Nussbaum was no longer seen as a young artist on the rise. He was, according to the Nazi doctrine, first and foremost a Jew. Uh, Felix, like many Jews mm, then, was bothering questions about the future and about the history of Europe in the face of the escalation of Nazis. Nussbaum understood that returning to Germany is equal to finding himself in deadly danger. On his painting, he paid attention to disturbing tree losing leaves or uh, ravers uh, circling over corpses. This scene may have reflected uh, subconscious fear about the fate of his parents. Parents, uh, perhaps he sensed that his family would soon be murdered. I have to mention that uh, Felix's father, uh, Philip, Philip Nussbaum, had proudly served his fatherland during the Great War as a soldier in the uh, Osnabri Cavalry. Uh, he was to remind a faithful member of its Veterans Association for almost 35 years. Love for the fatherland was the mm, decisive reason why artist parents didn't emigrate. Uh, life in uh, exile was for Felix, as he called uh, it, um, unrooted life. Uh, he painting of harbors and rooftop view of his living quarters became motive for endless waiting uh, and feeling uh, of entrapment. We see street and jetty, jetty as places of isolation and abandonment. A lot of prospects and people waiting uh, around idly. Lost places devoid of hope and full of resignation, like for example here. And 
On this picture, uh, here we see a huge black iron bollard stand in the middle uh, here, uh, in the middle uh, foreground, dominating the entire composition. If we run our imagination more strongly, we can see the arm of a huge octopus that could open at any moment to size their prey. The line behind black uh, iron bollard looks like, a, uh, looks like a sea snake ready to crush it cap captive. Uh, in my opinion, it is a metaphorical display of stagnation and inaction that can become a deadly treat lull our vigilance. Uh, after the fall of the uh, Blitzkrieg concept, Hitler began to implement the concept of Lebensraum. Its result was the implementation of the plan for the final solution of the Jewish question. In December 1940, Fel uh, Felix and Felka were entered into the Jewish register of the city of Brussels, which resulted in their being banned from work. The word for the artist has become obscure and shocking. He was aware that in a short period of time, the Jewish people couldn't be exterminated, but he was becoming more and more connected with his own nation. Art took on a new meaning for him and became a record of political events and crimes committed against Jewish. Subsequent months in hiding contributed to the degradation of his life as a man and as an artist. In the end, there was only a small place left in the attic of one of Brussels houses. For a, short, for a short period of time, he even stopped painting with oil paint because in this way he could betray his place of hiding. His, fe his fear of discovery became a reality. Nussbaum began to fully understand that his life as a Jew and the life of the entire Jewish community were under external threat. I would like to now uh, present to you some selected uh, painting from period 1939 to 1944. Uh, this work expressed his overwhelming uh, feelings of fear, melancholy, persecution, and the um, approach of death. Although uh, occasionally portraying symbols of a fragile, uh, fragile optimism. And one of them, the secret, three figures stand before an empty room, their head and shoulders forming a triangle. In the composition, the hand of the three figure form and convey a message. Uh, concealment, whispering, fear, listening, and knowledge, silence. On the immediate, immediate level, Nussbaum paintings document, documents the situation of the emigrants passing on the terrible news from Nazi Germany secretly, behind their hand, and they had been ordered to keep quiet in their host country. Otherwise, they can be recognized and expelled from there. Expelled from there. And Second one, fear. Uh, this is Felix and his Nancy uh, Marianne uh, and stand in front of a wall under a burning gas lamp that has been camouflaged with the blue glass because of the air raid. Behind them on the wall is a poster proclamating uh, it's France, um, uh, Tempit sur uh, Europe. It's something like a storm uh, under uh, uh, Europe. A storm over Europe. Uh, the fear is uh, visible in their face and eyes. German had now uh, unleashed war all over Europe. The artist, the Jewish artist, was aware that under pressure, present condition, all family connection could be destroyed. This growing isolation was acting like a destructive force on them, private world. And the next one, uh, all German. Orgelman, it's mean uh, organ gringer, um, and it's uh, an example of a strong. Uh, in it's it's example of a work uh, 
strongly referring to traditional form of imaging. There are references to Albert Dürer melancholy, a pensive man, probably alter ego, uh, artist alter ego, is surrounded by horrors which are the result of the war. Two skeletons uh, are reference to uh, Dance of Death or the Triumph of the Dead, the motif very popular in Baroque painting, stroll on a bloodied stone uh, sidewalk. Nightmarish street uh, is dead and blood uh, mark are visible on the facade, fac facade of devastating tenement houses. In some windows are stick black flags, symbol of mourning. We can see on the foreground the fly here. Uh, in Vanitas still life, a fly is often showing sitting on a scale as a wearing and a reminding of, bre of the brevity of life. The dead street depict the artist dead world. The storm of uh, Nazi tyranny that had unleashed war over Europe had broke a tray of death and devastation and finally destroyed culture. That all, it being blown down the street like shape of, uh, like a scrape of newspaper. And next is the, I think the most, uh, no, the best known pictures of this artist. It's uh, self portrait with uh, Jewish identity card and um, called by the employees of the museum in Osnabrück because in Osnabrück is the museum of Felix Nussbaum and uh, they, this employee called uh, for this uh, painting uh, Mona Lisa from Osnabrück it's order to emphasize its historical value. The image uh, in strongly accented of the symbol of Jewish identity, the, spar the passport and the star of the David, which, however, don't refer to Judaism in this case, but are a synonym of persecution and dehumanization. In the artist's eyes, uh, um, in the artist's eyes look uh, like an accusation uh, directing toward us. Um, does he demand uh, an answer in this way why he was so uh, humiliated? Or maybe the artist asked us to keep his I Jewish identity secret. Or maybe he asked if we realize what it means to be a Jew at that time. Um, in a uh, Later to uh, Ludwig Meidner, who was in exile in London, Nussbaum wrote, isn't painter always lonely? lonely? It is? Of course, I understand what you mean. But don't believe that stranger could feel home in exile. Whether here or there, creating without echo is depressing. You stand between two infinity high mountain peaks and or wall and cries and screams and no echo sounds back. The pressing is also for the many work that one has painted and they, and they standing on acting muted and bored. The last two years of Felix Nussbaum's life can be described as lonely in the face of death. Um, and he, I think he recognized uh, the task of his art, showing the truth. Um, and the next uh, one, um, it's uh, Jeff by the window. Um, a man unshaving stand leading against the wall, like before execution, his hand uh, passively behind his back and it changed, chained. we see how the normal citizen become a pariah. I would like to quote uh, Professor Dan Diner's words. Beyond the murder of the Jew, Auschwitz was 
practically refutation of Western civilization. Faced with such senseless destruction for destruction, save, uh, sake the mind trained to think rational, rationality breaks down over the attempt to explain such unimaginable deeds. Acts like this in Auschwitz cannot be visualized or accepted by a rational determined by logica, logical patterns of truth. The mind shatters into fragments. This is also explain the failure of the victims to offer any resistance. And I think we can see here as well uh, this, uh, this Jeff is in the Nazi definition become a prisoner in his and, and his room become a cell, even without being uh, barred. Outside his cell, he can no longer live. And uh, as well, some other uh, painter, uh, some other uh, painter. I just, tr uh, I just would like to show here this uh, Star of David, the sheet of paper, and this uh, map on this crashed wall, and uh, this show the degree of the isolation and loneliness. And one more detail: a tree here. In the in this picture, the tree here, uh, well, uh, um, uh, the tree was uh, flu uh, flu uh, flourishing. There was still some hope, and. Here, this hope is dead. So, uh, finishing my uh, presentation, I just would like to uh, say that um, painting for uh, Felix Nussbaum, just one more simple, uh, um, painting for Felix Nussbaum was uh, gained a new meaning. It was saving his humanity, a form of resistance, the, per per the preservation of human dignity and the right to self-determination. Emil Langui, Belgic critic, wrote, it is the art of the exile, the homeless, in the noblest sense of the word, and art that crawl where it is, cannot flow and still break through because it's, it has something to say. During the last months of his life, Felix Nussbach took 23 photos of his work in a professional photo studio in the center of Europe. I showed you a few of them. It was so important to him that he risked his own life. He kept them separately in the case anything should happen to the work. Nussbach was aware that the memory is very fleeting and often dies with the human of German aggression. That is why painting was for him a connect with the present and above all, a bridge to the future. This surviving painting still raises a question. How could this un unimaginable uh, triumph of death progress so easily in a civilized world? Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting and impressive presentation. And we have time for two short questions. Comments, yes, <laughs> but very short. Well, I, I think that it was rather basic presentation of Nussbaum, and this is professional audience. And Nussbaum is the most important artist on Holocaust. So when you were speaking about it, you were, didn't say how he was, how, where he was hid, hiding, how he was gave in, uh, what about his family, which all family, not only his wife, was murdered in the same day. I think uh, all, all this historical perspective, it's extremely important for Nussbaum. And uh, the most important thing, you said that it was a therapy. What kind of therapy? Definitely it was not a therapy because it's impossible to have a therapy in this case. In case of Nussbaum, uh, it's no therapy. It's uh, a statement and, and despair. It's 100% total sheer despair. Uh, and, and he is the best artist who actually conveyed Holocaust to us. So definitely not, not uh, any kind of 
<laughs> therapy, and definitely not kind of salvation, definitely not kind, any kind of breach, because he knew precisely well, and that's why he asked his friends by all means to save his work. It was a testament, a testimony, but not a breach. And uh, so I, I, I just think that Felix Nussbaum really deserved better. <laughs> Yeah, thank I you very just, much. I just tried to say that it was short time for presentation and I just would like to show some uh, pictures, just uh, art for art and uh, the um, titan line between art for art and art for documentary, the history. And you, you couldn't uh, in t uh, 25 minutes show everything what you say. Of course, uh, of course, I know that his old family uh, were more that in, uh, in Auschwitz or in Stutthof but uh, it wasn't my uh, concept to show uh, th this, what are you talking about? And about uh, what are you, what you said about this, um, uh, this therapy, uh, I uh, spoke with um, uh, Sabrina, I forgot the name, from a curator from the uh, museum in Osnabrück, where is the um, most uh, collection of this uh, artist, and she told me as well, like in some other researcher, that this kind of uh, self-portrait, uh, when he was examined himself, it was like a kind of therapy, because he checked himself and he uh, tried every day uh, show, painting the uh, next um, self-portrait, his own feeling, and, uh, and um, connect this feeling with the situation, uh, the political situation. So I, uh, I am sure it was some kind of therapy. And uh, not only Nussbaum do, uh, done this, uh, of course, Rembrandt, it was uh, uh, one of the most example of the therapy, uh, like uh, checking in his self-portrait, something like that. So. Thank you, David Glasser from Bernoulli Gallery Museum in London. I just wanted to congratulate you on your uh, presentation. Uh, I've known Nussbaum for, as a collector and in the, in, within the museum sector for over 30 years, and I find it fascinating. And the debate that we've just heard just shows that art and academics are an inexact science, and it is the debate that actually enhances our knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, thank you as well. Um, thank you. Um, I want to second this. It's quite interesting to see, do we have as professionals, what is a professional here? Do we have as professional the ability to say something is the most important, the best, the greatest art piece of art in a certain environment? I think it's much more important and interesting to, th to see who has got the power to determine if something is important or not. And I see a lot of people um, agreeing on this. I would certainly disagree with a lot of things, like everybody will, who has done something on this will agree with, with, will disagree with something. But I think it's quite important to realize that this has become some of the most iconic pictures. So it's not, it doesn't irritate us anymore because it fulfills so much our expectation of what a Holocaust picture should look like. Yeah, thank you very much for the comments. And they hope that we will have time to discuss those issues. Exactly, in, exactly. You said what yeah, I wanted to say. At the very end, okay. Uh, so, 